Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk about Germany and we are going to look how they can become a nuclear powerhouse again. So currently Germany, they are in limbo because their government has fallen and they are going to go vote for a new government. I believe it's going to be in March. So what is going on? I took a deep look in the German energy landscape and I tried to figure out how much nuclear could be realized at or near existing site and in this video we are going to see what is happening politically why germany must reconsider using nuclear a brief overlook on how nuclear germany would take shape what designs are considered and why what locations are considered and why and how this will transform the german economy so first why re why germany must reconsider using nuclear investments in renewables and have not ensured uh, security of supply uh, cheap electricity and also did not maintain significant reductions in carbon emissions in fact if you look at you know how much carbon emissions have been reduced in germany if you contrast that with the amount of money that they've invested then it basically wasn't worth the effort now the government and in industry are in full crisis mode as we all know, the Scholz government has collapsed due to the economic crisis. And what you see is that the industry is slowly failing. Uh, ThyssenKrupp just announced that they want to lay off 11,000 people. Volkswagen is currently basically having a fight with its own people. They say, okay, we want to lay off 10,000 people. Plus, we want to uh, close a couple of uh manufacturing plants and what we also see is that steel aluminium uh, fertilizer and vehicles uh, all those industries basically are struggling a lot now first what is happening politically when you look at you know this 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 graph over here these polls from politico you can see that the cdu slash csu is leading the polls at 32 percent followed by the alternatives for deutschland uh 19 percent and then followed by uh Schultz's party, the SPD, who only gets 15%. And then we have the Greens with 12. And then for, and further down, we have uh, th three relatively small uh, political parties. So a brief overlook on how a new nuclear Germany could take shape, right? Uh, restarting the closed nuclear power plants in germany is is going to be unlikely there's only like two or three nuclear power plants that really can be restarted maybe four if they really really you know want to invest the time and money to do so so what did i do i first i started planning new reactors at or near existing sites because that's obviously where you start and then I started planning new reactors at or near coal and gas plants. And I wanted to know how far we could get. So what designs did I consider and why? So first of all, uh, you know, with the large reactors, I would go with the EPR2 and the EPR1200. And the reasons for this is to secure a European nuclear industry together with France, to set up an EU domestic supply chain and expertise, to increase the numbers to significant figures, so reactor deployments I'm talking about. Uh, we want a ruthless focus on cost cutting and faster delivery, and each plan from the first until the 10th uh, plant delivered must be faster, must be built faster and cheaper until the bottom line is reached. Now, let ho let's hope that it can be done in 10 units, but it could also be done in 15 units or perhaps 20 units but that will be really uh taking a long time you really want to expedite that process you really want to start with the first one the second one has to be 15 percent faster and cheaper uh the, the one that comes after that has to be 10 percent faster and cheaper uh, the one after that has to be eight percent you know at some point the learning stops and, and that's when you basically reach your bottom line now, for small reactors, because believe it or not, Germany has a lot of potential for small modular reactors. Uh, I would consider the X300, uh, the Holtec SMR, and the Rolls-Royce SMR, because those, I believe, 
at this moment are the most mature. But also, if you look at industry, which is something I did not take a deep dive in, I was just looking at electricity. But if you look at industry, high heat uh, requirements uh, will absolutely open a huge door for small modular reactors like the molten salt reactor or the pebble bat reactor. So what cons what locations did I consider and why? Uh, and this is first, I'm going to show you my Excel sheet. So what you see over here is uh, these over here are the locations. These This over here are the names of all the uh, nuclear power plants in Germany. Uh, over here, you can see how many units there used to be. So there were 28 units, I believe. I, I, I dropped one or two of the really, really small ones off the list. They used to have roughly 24 gigawatts of uh, nuclear capacity. And if I would, you know, I would look at how much capacity there is and, and what you could potentially do with the existing uh, power lines that are there, uh, then you could basically uh, go and deploy also 28 units, uh, but you would get a little bit more capacity, roughly 1,956 uh, megawatts more than there used to be uh, back when they had their legacy power plants. Now, suppose that we have an unconstrained future and the unconstrained future is where I basically built more plants than there used to be in Germany uh, we would we would increase the capacity uh, then we would would be able to increase uh, the capacity up to nearly 3200 uh, megawatts oh no sorry 32 uh, gigawatts and 32,000 megawatts that's about seven and a half gigawatts more than there used to be now, I made a nice map, uh, the map that I'm going to show you right now. I made it in Google Maps. I think that it is nicer uh, because it's it, it's better animated. Over here, you basically see all the nuclear power plants in Germany. And I'm going to zoom into a couple of them to show you what I've done. Now, Greifswald, this is... This is uh, this is a particular, a, a peculiar uh, situation because what I'm doing here is basically I am going to make sure that Nord Stream 1 and 2 really are dead and buried because this over here, uh, this is basically uh, the point where Nord Stream 1 and 2 uh, come, uh, come, come on shore. Uh, and this is one of the spots that I would consider uh, to build a new nuclear power plant. Now you can see the old nuclear power plant is still there and this used to be a Russian design, VVER, um, and, and I don't believe that it ever really uh, made any electricity. It was basically finished at the end of the USSR, when the USSR fell, uh, so, so that's basically it. I would choose either this position over here or perhaps I would uh, pick a location over here uh, to build a new nuclear reactor and I would really want to uh, basically use this uh, switchyard that's available over here. Then we go and zoom out. We are going to go to the to the Alba, which is uh, the large river that runs from Hamburg to the sea. Well, it, it, obviously it goes further than, than Hamburg, but that's, that's basically... Uh, Economically, when you look at a maritime, uh, when you look at it from a maritime perspective, this is the most important river in Germany. Then over here, you have Brunsbüttel, uh, Brunsbüttel, uh, home to a lot of economic activity, uh, mainly petrochemical related. But over here, you can see there used to be an old boiling water reactor over there. It, it, it is still, uh, it, it has not been deconstructed as far as I know. And this over here would be the terrain that I would consider to use to build uh, new SMRs at this location. If we go to Brockdorf, which is slightly uh, upriver, then over here you can see maybe this is one of those units that can be restarted. But if it couldn't be restarted, then I would then then I would uh, basically uh, think that we should build an EPR2 at that location. And then we cross the river over here, uh, slightly more upriver. There's Stade over here. Again, a lot of uh, petrochemical uh, activity there's also some uh, steel activity over here, uh, wind turbine blades, as you see, um, and, and, and what 
Now, I believe that there is also a, an LNG terminal over here these days. Now, Stata again, a uh, nice old nuclear reactor uh, has been has been taken offline a little bit longer ago. So probably, as you can see by all the activity over here, the blue boxes and such, uh, they are well underway in their decommissioning uh, activities. So again, you need to leverage. Um, I don't know if it's even la if it even can be leveraged uh, the switchyard and such. So I would would consider building a new nuclear reactor right next door. Now, pretty interesting over here, Trimble. This is a bit of a tough situation because it's really built in. It's you know we have this uh, this little village over here. Then you have a load of uh, civilian build buildings over here. So there's not a lot of room to build a new nuclear power plant over here. It was sited quite uh, cozily uh, or or neatly within you know uh, this this entire uh, site. Then we go to Stendhal. This is also interesting. There used to be plans, and they were actually constructing VVER reactors over here. Uh, you, you can see some of the remains of this nuclear power plant over here. But these days, and, and, and also some of the infrastructure that they uh, made, you know, uh, this is probably going to. This probably was supposed to be the cold, uh, the cold water intake, or perhaps the water, the the hot water intake. I don't know. Maybe they they pl plan to build something over here as well. But this would be a site that I would consider for new nuclear reactors if I were to build nuclear reactors in Germany. If I got to say to the Germans what to do, which I obviously don't. Emsland is probably still uh, restartable at this point. So this one, I would really hope that they would restart at some point. This is one of the, I think it's one of the most beautiful reactors out there. But if you really needed to build a new nuclear power plant, I would demolish the gas plant over here and build a new nuclear power plant over there, especially because the switch yard is right next door. And then we zoom out again. Uh, we go to Gronde, which is the most beautiful nuclear power plant in Germany. I, w I, I actually got a, a fine when I was parked over here, not not for parking, but for flying a drone, and not for flying a drone near a nuclear power plant, but for flying a drone near the river, the Weser over here. So, Gronde, uh, beautiful old lady. Unfortunately, um, they they are really moving quite fast with the decommissioning work on this reactor. Uh, I hope that it can be restarted, but I'm but I'm uncertain. But if suppose that. Um, you really needed a place to build a new uh, nuclear power plant. Just go and, and, and site your new nuclear power plant right next door. I mean, there's just a field there. Uh, obviously, you need to talk to the farmers who own the fields. But honestly, that would be my choice. I, I, would, I would basically build a new nuclear power plant right next door. Then we go south a little bit, then you get Wurgassen, right? An old boiling water reactor. This is a little bit more tricky, this terrain. I don't know if this would be the most ideal situation or if you actually had to uh, deconstruct the plant and then build a new plant, but that would take time, uh, unfortunately. So so that would be a tricky position to do that. Then we have Grafen Reinfeld. Grafen Reinfeld, they just uh, demolished the... Uh, uh, the cooling towers, unfortunately, um, this one was already closed when I filmed it. I, I made a time lapse of the Grafen Reinfeld uh, nuclear power plant. I believe that I was uh, sitting in this field over here somewhere. No, I was sitting in this field over here. And then the farmer came and he was asking us, you know, what are you doing? And we were like, oh, we like the nuclear power plant. It's really beautiful. And we want to, you know, we want to make a sun set um, a, a, a golden hour a time lapse of the sun setting behind the nuclear power plant. And he was like, he was almost moved to tears that we were doing that, which was really crazy. But I would I would consider building a new plant over here or perhaps somewhere in the fields over here. Um, there's plenty of space there. You know, space shouldn't be the problem. 
Then we go to Biblis again. Space, not a big problem there. Unfortunately, they're well on their way uh, in, in deconstructing these plants, doing the decommissioning work. And they're also building a natural gas plant over here, uh, which is, you know, honestly, why would you do that? Uh, I get that you're trying to leverage all the existing infrastructure there, but use it for a new nuclear power plant, for Christ's sake, and, 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 and leave it the way it is. This nuclear power plant, Phillipsburg, this unit over here, I saw operational on its last day i parked my car over here somewhere and then i walked over here there used to be two cooling towers i believe at the place where they are currently constructing a new gas plant it seems um yeah this is this is also uh, again uh you know tough situation uh, there's plenty of room that right next to it so if you really wanted to build a new nuclear power plant you could do it there uh zooming out we go to uh, oberheim and neckar westheim uh, oberheim wasn't that large, but there's still enough space left and right. You could potentially build a new nuclear power plant right next door. Used to be a nice pressurized water reactor over here. Uh, and then we go to Neckar Westheim over here. This is a tough, uh, a tough one because Neckar Westheim is really it's it's built in this. Um, it looks like a former stone quarry. It's really. It's really set inside the ground, you know. Um, also, these cooling towers are very low, very low. So I, I don't know if you could actually fit a new nuclear power plant over here. These fields are significantly higher than the nuclear power plant and these fields as well. I made a video. Um, I made a time lapse of this uh, nuclear power plant on this road over here. Um, and, and it's it, it's all going downhill, downhill, downhill. I don't know. Maybe you could potentially build some one here, or or. But I would I would I would advise the Germans if they would want to build a new nuclear power plant in that region, to build it across from the river. That that would be my choice. Then we have Gundremingen, uh, two boiling water reactors. Very tough spot to 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 find new space for a new nuclear reactor. Uh, maybe you have to wait, or maybe you have to redevelop all this stuff over here. Uh, but uh, uh, this is a tough one. Let's see. Do, did I get them all? Oh, yeah. And there is Izar, obviously. Izar may be restarted as well. One of those nuclear power plants that was shut down quite late in the game. Uh, Bavaria uh, tried to save it, but unfortunately, uh, the German government uh, didn't didn't budge. So these are the locations for the nuclear power plants in Germany uh, that I would consider uh, to redevelop. So the existing capacity there, 24 gigawatts, new new potential capacity somewhere around 26 or you know 32 gigawatts. Then we go to the coal fired power power plants and the gas plants as you can see there's 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 quite some nuclear power plants there so what i took a i, I took a look at how much capacity there was uh, so suppose you want to build a new nuclear power play, power station that that leverages you know all the infrastructure that's available at neurat well then you can go to because it's 4300 megawatts you could potentially build three EPR2s there, uh, getting up to 4,800 megawatts. But the trouble is, what what is the cooling source? Because I believe that they're using groundwater there, which is not optimal. But there is enough there is enough space there in order to to actually do it. So let's go to the next map over here. So these are all the the the, the, the power plants that I would consider uh, for for you know replacing with nuclear power plants. Uh, to some degree, some of these might get you know they 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 could do. Uh, what the United States is planning with the Project Phoenix currently. Uh, but but let, let's just have a look. So currently what you see over here, these are the lignite pits, right? That's where the Germans extract lignite, brown coal from the ground, and that gets transported to these uh, large uh, power plants that are over here. So Neurath, this is Neurath over here. It's a huge plan, 4,300 megawatts. It's two plans, basically, but they, 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 they lie right next to each other. And what I would do is I would basically go north and try to find space for a new nuclear power plant over here. Uh, you could potentially build three EPR2s there, uh, 1,600 or 1,700 megawatts, depending on uh, what's on offer. The only trouble is where do they get their water from, you know? Uh, you have this Neurother Zee over here. What it is actually is a uh, former brown coal 
uh, hole where they extract a lot of brown coal from. That fills up because of the groundwater and, uh, and because of the rain. Maybe that's a place where they uh, they pick the water, but it's also I, I don't know exactly where to get their their water supply from for for cooling. As you can see there's cooling towers over here, so clearly uh, they use evaporative cooling in order to cool these uh, 4.3 gigawatts of coal fire power plants. So the question is, can you reuse that source? Is it is it is it allowed to? basically say okay we keep using the 4.3 gigawatts worth of uh, cooling water that is available at this at this site but i don't know so these i highlighted in pink over here because that's like the, it's really a question of whether that can actually happen so if we go to uh let's see neither awesome right that's 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 another one of those um of those lignite lignite fired power plants it's it's due south from from uh from neurad so i mean just look at it these plants are built right up to the the village or the town right so here's the town over Ausen, nieder Ausen, and, and then basically you have the coal fire power plant right inside the town now what i would do is I would basically decommission this plan and say, okay, we call it a day, we start demolishing it slowly. Uh, unfortunately, the switchyard is over here somewhere. I don't know where it is. It's, it's hard to see. There's a tiny switchyard over here. Uh, but I would, I would really consider building my EPRs over here, right? Currently, there's a lot of groundworks going on there. Uh, this is usually the place where they sort the coal and, and, and basically put it in these rows and these rows then get get sucked up and put onto a conveyor belt and this conveyor belt as you can see it runs over here it goes into the coal fire power plant and that's where it gets burned in the coal boilers and then turned into electricity uh so so these the, these are the these are the, the toughest ones to do uh this one as well wise while right this is also a large a uh, lignite fired and uh, lignite fired uh, coal plant over here you can see the lignite being stored uh, over here you can see the conveyor belt that runs up and up and up into the boiler building where the coal gets burned and where it gets turned into steam basically the the, the water that is uh, running through the pipes near uh, next to the boiler that gets heated up and it it turns to steam and then over here you have the power conversion equipment in this long building over here uh, where the electricity is uh, eventually generated now over here you can see again evaporative cooling they use large cooling towers question is where does the water come from it's probably coming from from these large uh, lignite pits over here because if you don't pump the groundwater out of them they will fill that that's that's what would happen with these with these large lignite pits because they are really deep i mean we're talking about 800 to 1000 meters deep so at some point you know groundwater is just going to well up from from underneath and 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 submerge this whole place i think that uh the water that is being used to cool these coal plants comes from uh, the groundwater that would otherwise seep into these uh these lignite pits now let me see there were a couple of really interesting places that i wanted to show you so the first one is willemshaven over here right so what you have here is two coal plants you have one coal plant and two coal plants both of those are 750 megawatts now what i would do here is i would demolish this coal plant and even though it's together it's 1400 i would go for either two apr 12 uh, or eight i would go for either two epr 1200 so that's 2400 megawatts and it's a thousand megawatts more than is currently uh, available here and what i would do is i would first build the two epr 2s here or the epr 1200s at the southern location you can keep the northern location operational at that time during that time but what i would do is i would then demolish this place entirely and i would basically ask an aluminium factory or somebody who wants to produce uh, you know hydrogen steel to come and sit here co-locate with the nuclear power plant obviously uh, they, they would need 
a gigawatt of power, you can you can dimension their operation such that they can use a gigawatt of power. Um, that would be that would that, that would be one of the most interesting developments in Germany, if you ask me. And then over here, you have a, a really small one, a uh, small gas fire power plant. You can only place a couple of SMRs over there. And, and that's what I wanted to show you in this in this video, is that if you look at the the, the, the capacity, right? You have 4,300 and you go down, what is it? We're at uh, number 23 here. If we go to number 43, so that's 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 20, that's uh, 20, 20 plants uh plants away then you're already below one gigawatt so over here this this over here this entire uh list of these smaller gas and coal plants that's the list of plants that you know warrant seriously warrant uh, considering smrs to be built there so you built your large reactors over here right where the where the large coal fired power plants are so you have the EPR2, which gets used all the way uh, down to 1600 megawatt of existing capacity. And then once you dive below 1600 megawatts, I would go for the EPR 1200, right? So there's like one, two, three, four, five, um, four EPR 1200s that could potentially be built at these places. Now, if you look at the, the nuclear power plants, there's another one, two, three, four, five. EPR 1200s that can be deployed here. In total, what you can can do is one. Uh, this is three, four, five, six, uh, seven, and then we get let's see, ten, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, uh, nineteen, twenty one, twenty three, uh, twenty five, twenty seven, twenty nine, thirty one, thirty three. And then we get 35, 36, 37 EPR2s could be built in Germany if you if you really want to dimension these plans well, right? So this is this is really if you would ask me, draw up a plan, you know, uh, create a plan for Germany. How do we how how do we get away from fossil fuels? This is what I would do. This is how I would start this whole adventure. Oh, this is an interesting one as well. This is one that I wanted to highlight. Let's see if I can, if I can do that. Frimmersdorf, right? Let's see if I can. Um, I have to expand this. I have to scroll down. Let's see, Frimmersdorf. It's pretty far down below. We have Lunen. A wire Frimmersdorf. There we are, Frimmersdorf, right? So this is nice about Google Maps. So Frimmersdorf, it's quite a large plant, right? Look at that. look at how 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 busy it looks, right? All these coal boilers over here. You have these large smokestacks. Uh, those are the, those are the exhausts over here. There's a there's a newer block. Uh, these are probably older blocks, but look at how many evaporative cooling towers there are over here. Um, you also can see that they're, they're destroying some of them. And it's not just, I, I believe, well, no, they're just simple, simple parabolic ones. But the, the interesting thing about Frimmersdorf is you couldn't replace it with a nuclear power plant just, just on this site. Now what you have over here, as you can see by all the rims, so this is this is this used to be a lignite uh, a lignite pit over here. I wonder whether it would be possible, doable, whether you could could get a a, a, a construction license for it to build a nuclear power plant in there rather than build it here, build it there. I mean, you still need to pump out you still need to pump out the 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 groundwater in order to make sure that it doesn't get inundated maybe that's a flood risk so i don't know but that that's something that i really i really would like to know whether this would be a good location or a bad location i mean uh, initially my thoughts were it will be a bad location you shouldn't do it there uh because of the groundwater because it you know at some point if the pumps fail then 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 your nuclear power plant would become inundated right but still still there's something in me that says somebody has to take a look at it in any case if you look if you zoom out you know again what you see over here uh this is the rear area 
uh, the rear area with the with 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 the largest amount of coal plants. There's so many coal plants over here, as you can see, right? There's a coal plant over here. There's a coal plant over here. I would consider actually moving across the river here uh, to build your EPRs here instead of here. Um, you know, keep this keep this coal plant operational for the time being. Uh, do your do your civil works over here. Uh, create you know your your EPRs and your cooling infrastructure and your uh, anything that you need to run your operation. Build it there, and, and then basically you know connect connect to the the, the old switchyard over there. Um, let's see. There's also an interesting one over here, Herne. Right, this is a relatively small uh, coal plant, but as you can see, there's a lot of room around it that that that's unused because there used to be a coal-fired power plant over here. Dotton is also interesting, and this used to be the old coal plant over here. It's no longer in use, so they build a new coal-fired power plant over here. I mean, this this fire this this coal plant is is a tragedy really because it's. I believe it's no no older than five years at this moment. So it's a really new coal fire power plant. I would would consider building it over here, a new, new nuclear power plant over here, or perhaps demolish uh, the coal plant and then build your new nuclear power plant over here. Keep the cooling tower, reuse the cooling tower for your evaporative cooling. And as you can see, there's a nice canal uh, flowing right next to it that you can use the cool water from. So as you can see, there's loads and loads and loads of opportunities for new nuclear in Germany. Now, if you would do this, I have a an electricity model on my computer, and this is this is for suppose that we would build all these nuclear power plants, right? If you go down here, what you see, it would be a grand total of almost 107 gigawatts. So Germany would be able to build 107 gigawatts at these sites. If you would, if I would plug in the 107 gigawatts in my electricity model, and I would keep uh, 10 gigawatts of offshore wind, 10 gigawatts of onshore wind, I would keep 25 gigawatts of solar. I mean, the the, the point. That, I don't know if it's if it's if it's visible or not, but the demand curve is over here. This is based on 2023 demand. The only thing that I did was I raised it up to a level where the average. Uh, demand is 73 gigawatts and that's what that well that's that that's basically the average that germany has so i mean nuclear would basically fulfill all the electricity demand that there is in germany and you would use all the access to do hydrogen or whatever uh but you would have energy to spare to stick into this new economy that you want to build so how would this transform the german economy if you would build 107 gigawatts of new nuclear power, then Germany would have uh, about a half to two million of people, two million people active in the nuclear industry. Germany would have revitalized its domestic industry, right? Uh, prices would have stabilized. There's cheap, cheap co-located uh, industry, so. You would get metal production such as hydrogen steel and aluminium back. Uh, the car manufacturers would become more competitive. Uh, you would you would be able to produce zero carbon ammonia, so ammonia that doesn't made that is not made from 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 steam reformed hydrogen and nitrogen that you get out of this out of the air, and you would get zero carbon fertilizer. You would also be able to be, to to create sustainable fuels for road, sea, and air transport. And finally, uh, I think I think this is the most important bit. Germany will, will have established itself as a world leader in reactor deployments, together with France, obviously. They would have built a sizable nuclear industry where even the the, the difficult stuff like the, the reactor pressure vessels could still could could again be built in Germany or in France. Uh, stuff like pumps, stuff like pipes. Difficult stuff that you that you generally don't make, in, in, you know, in Europe that that usually gets made by Mitsubishi heavy industries or or Dusan industries in, in in Asia somewhere. This is stuff that we actually could learn how to build ourselves again. Uh, think about uh, heat exchangers, you know, large 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 steam generators or. Think about the, the turbine equipment. There's loads and loads and loads of things that we can do ourselves. But the, the problem is, 
in order to do it yourself, it has to be worth doing yourself. And in order to make it worth doing yourself, you have to commit to a real nuclear strategy, a national nuclear plan. So that's what that's what I would like to advise to the people from the CDU and the CSU uh, to come up with a German nuclear plan. Uh, you can call me if you like to. I mean, I would love to 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 show you around in my, in my little silly plan uh, and, and then basically take it, go with it and make Germany into an industrial powerhouse again. Make Germany a force for good in the world rather than the silly stuff that you're doing currently you know, in Europe, at COP, uh, telling everybody they can't have sustainable finance options for new nuclear power plants, uh, trying to, to foist this renewable idiocy on everybody. Just stop it. Seriously, grow up, Germany. Uh, do something good for, for, for a change. Now, thank you all for watching, and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye. <coughs>